so I'm gonna talk about our two projects. Uh, so CellPose, which is an algorithm for doing cellular segmentation. And it's a generalist algorithm that's been trained on a lot of data and can be used on a diverse array of cellular images. Uh, it's been widely adopted in the community. We get around 11,000 downloads a month. And then for, for data, for cellular data, which actually also has functional information where you have a time dimension, we have another algorithm called Sweet2P, which can find correlated ROIs um, here, basically where these pixels are correlated in time. And this package is also widely used. Um, we have around 6,000 downloads a month for that package too. And so I'll briefly say a little bit about cell pose and then a little bit about Sweet2P. Um, and then for the description of future work, I think that's best kind of left in the proposal. Uh, so we've kind of created cell pose to work on a variety of analyses that people need for cellular segmentation. So people need cellular segmentation for counting cells, monitoring cell shapes, quantifying gene expression, um, and also for recording neural activity. And so we, we basically, we created an algorithm that could work as well as possible across a lot of these different data types, uh, rather than specializing a model on, on one specific data type. And then additionally, if you have additional information in the, in, in the time domain, you can also use the correlation of these pixels over time. And that, that's what our algorithm Sweet2P does to detect ROIs in functional imaging data. And so CellPos, uh, we trained it on 70,000 circled cells across um, 600 different images of cells from a variety of sources, fluorescent, non-fluorescent images, even non-cellular images. And what we found was that, so the ground truth is in uh, yellow and the, the segmentations are in red, is that uh, cell pose can accurately segment a wide variety of, of cells uh, and also non-cell images. And we also have cell pose as a 2D algorithm, but we can extend it to 3D by running it in X, Y. It, it basically, you have a volume, you run it in X, Y, XZ and YZ and combine this information. And that can give you segmentations that look like this. This is data that's, that's used for in situ RNA sequencing. And you can also look through the stack in the GUI. And so another aspect of, of cell pose is we wanted to make it easy for users to use. And so we built this GUI that can run in 2D and 3D on, on images. So basically the user can start our GUI and drag and drop an image and run the algorithm with certain settings that they choose. And then they can explore the, the segmentation. They can also correct it themselves. And then after they correct the images, they also have the option to send the, these images to our server. Um, we have a Google Cloud bucket that accepts manual segmentations from users. And we've created actually even a new model using these user submissions. But uh, what we found was that this still, the Cyto2 model still doesn't work for, for everything. And so um, basically, like for example, these two images with cell pose 1.0 basically there were a lot of cells missing. Um, and so what we wanted to then create was an algorithm that could also segment, that could quickly learn uh, from new images and new segmentations um, on, on data that's kind of out, of out of the test, or sorry, the training set of cell pose. And so basically you can annotate, you drag and drop an image, you run our, our model, and then you, you fix the annotation in the GUI and then you can pop up in the in the models uh, tool um, bar. You can train. You can actually set up training a model from the segmentations in the folder. And so this is the the model is training now on these segmentations. And then this train model will be applied to the next image in your folder. And you can see how good it is. You can update those segmentations and then retrain the model again with with these new. Um, additional segmentations that you've added. And doing this kind of a human in the loop uh, curation process basically 
means that these kinds of updated segmentations that I was showing here from Cellpos 2.0 took less than 30 minutes for a user to kind of annotate and train their model. And so that's pretty much the summary of, of our two kind of uh, cell pose papers and, and the, the GUI that can be used to do all of these different tasks. For, for Suite 2P, we, we also have a GUI um, and the kind of the workflow is that we take in raw data. So this will be um, data that's X, Y by Y by time now, because we have this big, we have a volume of imaging data. These cells are lighting up when they're active. This is calcium imaging. The first thing we do is we correct the motion in the in these frames because these are this is in vivo imaging, so the the mouse is is running even, and so you'll have motion in the in the volume that you have to correct. And so this is now what the corrected frame looks like. And then the next step in Suite 2P is to detect ROIs. So um, this is done by by finding pixels that are correlated to each other in time, and and extracting those as masks. And those masks are shown as these different colors here. There's also the option to run cell pose inside Suite 2P as well for people who have uh, more anatom that have more um, maybe baseline activity or don't have as much functional activity to use for segmentation. And then the last thing is the, the signals that you sum the, the activity in each of these masks for each time point, and that gives you these tr time traces of the neural activity. And so there's various um, output formats for from Suite 2P. One of them is the neural data without borders, it, which is kind of the one of the accepted standards in the, the neuroscience field now for sharing data. And you can explore data in any of these formats um, inside of our GUI that allows you to also to run the pipeline and also to um, click on different cells, look at their correlations, look at correlations with external variables, uh, run un an unsupervised algorithm called raster map to visualize the neural activity. And so it allows the user to kind of explore the data before even kind of getting their hands dirty in, in a Jupyter notebook or in MATLAB. And so, yeah, that, that's, that's it for our two pipelines. Thanks a lot, Carson. I have one question. Uh, what, uh... Do you plan to do throughout the OSSI proposal? What are your goals and hopes that we can achieve during that project, Photos 2? Uh, yeah, so I have the, um, I think, oh, I think I skipped that slide actually. Um, I have a slide with all of the, the list of, of aims in the proposal, uh, but I didn't know if it made sense to go through it. But uh, the so the underlying goal is to make sure that the software is maintained and that issues are addressed with uh, users that are currently using the software. Um, and then also making sure that it's, uh, that it's integrated in labs in Genelia and that people don't have trouble running it here. Um, and also, um, and then also adding updates to, this, to both of the softwares uh, to help support people at Genelia and in the community because those would then get contributed back to GitHub. Um, and so there's a there's a list of some of those kind of ongoing projects and proposed projects from people at Genelia that would make sense as kind of first steps for extending these pipelines for various users. Great, thanks so much. Thanks, uh, thanks so much, Carson.